Apple made the switch to Apple Silicon, we got rid of the slow and heat prone Intel CPUs that spun up the fan when you open two Google Chrome tabs. Genuinely, Apple Silicon is unbeatable. If you're still using Windows laptops, no hate, I just don't understand why you would do that. Well, that's because a lot of software is only available on Windows. But what if I told you that you can run Windows and Linux on your Mac? I'm gonna show you how to do it. We're gonna run some gaming benchmarks across different Macs and hopefully get you away from Intel. Now we're gonna use Parallels, which they did happen to sponsor this video, but I've actually been using Parallels to run Windows for years. In fact, this video and this video I made was not sponsored, which I kinda wish it was, cause it got a lot of views. I just made that video cause I genuinely do use Parallels a lot. So you can click my affiliate link if you find that Parallels is the right fit for you, but all the opinions in this video are my own, and I'm gonna tell you the honest upsides and downsides of Parallels after like half a decade of use, well before they ever reached out to me. So like I said, on my main computer, which is a 2021 M1 Mac 16 inch MacBook Pro, I've had parallels ever since I bought the computer. But I'm gonna benchmark games on this base M2 Mac Mini and this M3 MacBook Air, which is fanless. So one of the biggest upsides is the setup for parallels is hella easy. You just download it, click next, and it'll give you all these pre-built options, with Windows 11 being the most common one. We'll get to the Linux options. So you just click the Windows 11 option and sit back. Parallels will download Windows 11 for you and install it for you. You don't have to format, partition the hard drive, boot from the USB, or nothing. Another great upside is Parallels integrates super well with your Mac, which is hella useful for me. So when you click full screen, it auto adjusts your screen resolution, and it runs like it's native on your MacBook. Plus, the most helpful feature is the file integration. Everything you have on your Mac desktop downloads, documents, or whatever, is also available on your Windows desktop documents and downloads. Since I run old Windows OS's or Linux ISOs, sometimes I download on Mac OS realize I need to use a Windows only tool and just switch to Parallels and access the file from there. And also just a bonus feature is that Touch ID works on Windows 11 as well. Plus when you connect any external accessory like an SSD or a USB drive, Parallels asks you if you want it to connect to Mac or Windows. I need this all the time to burn bootable USBs or DVDs. The downside is though that it is flimsy. It works most of the time, but sometimes you just can't get the SSD or USB drive to show up on Windows without a restart. But the consistency has definitely improved with each update, and we're going to absolutely need this because I'm gonna install all the games that we're gonna run on this two terabyte SSD. Now let's get to Windows gaming. Parallels is going to be your best bet when it comes to compatibility with Windows games because you're running the full Windows have an experience. The downside is that there's going to be a lot of processing power wasted since you're running the full Windows environment. As we all know, Windows 11 has a lot of load. So when you install Windows 11, you get Windows 11 ARM on Parallels. Which honestly, Microsoft has done an exceptional job running x86-64 apps on ARM. So how Apple runs old Intel apps through Rosetta 2, Microsoft runs x86-64 apps through Prism. And I've not really run into any issues using it. You don't even realize what apps are running natively and what apps are running through Prism. So the three Macs we're going to test is this M1 Max MacBook Pro with 32 gigs of memory and 32 GPU cores. This was the top of the line MacBook I bought when it came out. Then we have the 2023 base M2 Mac Mini with 16 gigs of memory. This does have a fan and a 10 core GPU. And then finally we have the fanless MacBook Air with an M3 chip, 16 gigs of memory, and an 8 core GPU. So let's get to gaming. The one limitation we have on Parallels is that we only have support up to DirectX 11, no DirectX 12. So newer games that absolutely require DX12 will not not work. The first game I want to try out is GTA 5. The way you install it is pretty much exactly how you would do it on any other Windows PC. Just download the Rockstar Games Launcher, download the game, and you're good. Even though I don't play online, Rockstar did add BattleEye to GTA 5, which on Linux and Steam Deck doesn't work. But on Parallels, it does work, so you can play online. This is one of the benefits of running full Windows 11. Anyways, GTA 5 on the base M2 Mac Mini, with everything turned to normal, hovers around 30 FPS, dropping below it sometimes. Considering that this is a base chip with just 10 GPU cores that was never meant for gaming running through Parallels, I'm just impressed it runs at all. Moving up to the M3 chip, which mind you is fanless, the game runs slightly better, hovering around 30 FPS, but dipping frequently. However, this is a base M3, and it's pretty close to playable, so it should be fully playable on an M5. And I was right, because people have been testing it on the base M5 and it is fully playable. Now for the M1 Max, I first ran it at 720p-ish at normal settings and the FPS was just too high. In fact, it was bouncing around way too much, which was probably causing the stutters. So I turned it up to slightly higher than 1080p and the 
FPS was still too high, dipping up and down. Now, I'm trying to target a lock 30 FPS. So actually, I turned up a few settings to high, and now finally, we're hovering just above the 30 FPS mark. Bro, this is a four-year-old chip running it this well. Imagine how well the M5 Max will run it. Now, let's move on to Far Cry 5, which on the base M2 Mac Mini wasn't doing too hot on normal settings at 1080p. But then again, 1080p might be a bit too much for this base chip. So turning it down to 720p with low settings, we now have playable frame rates. I tried the same normal settings with 1080p config on the M3 MacBook Air, but it still couldn't handle it. We have to go down to 720p at low settings to get playable frame rates. On the M1 Max, we're sticking to 1080p, but normal settings still wouldn't give us playable frame rates. At low settings though, we're doing good. I think Far Cry 5 just isn't a very well-optimized game, but then again, I've never played it on a native gaming PC. And finally, F1 2020, which on the base M2 Mac Mini at 720p with low settings, we did about 31 FPS. That's not bad, especially considering this is the newest game we've tried and it looks pretty good. On the base M3 MacBook Air, we performed slightly worse, but the resolution was also slightly higher. And finally, the M1 Max had no problem maintaining an average 30 FPS at 1080p medium settings. I would have thought that there would have been a bigger gap between the M2 and M3, but I guess the lack of a fan does hinder the M3. Perhaps an M3 Mac Mini would have performed better. Okay, so like I mentioned before, Parallels can also run Linux. So you want to open Parallels, quit Windows 11, then go up to File, then New. Now you're back in this menu where like Windows 11, you have the option to install Linux. So we have Ubuntu, Ubuntu with Rosetta, Fedora, Debian GNU, Kali Linux, but you can also install Linux using your own ISO. Again though, these pre-built options are amazing because Parallels downloads the ISO and then also auto-installs. You don't have to do anything during the setup process. Linux is also hella quick at installing. And again, you get all the regular features like the resolution automatically matching your screen and sharing folders with your Mac. It is the full Linux experience on your Mac and it is pretty seamless. However, I do want to mention a few caveats. Number one is that this is Linux ARM and not the Linux x86-64 like we're used to on gaming PCs. Most Linux apps and users are on x86-64 so there will be software compatibility issues. Number two is that this is not meant for gaming since we use Proton on Linux and Proton needs Vulkan. Proton basically translates Windows DirectX API calls into Vulkan. However, you do not not have Vulkan support on Parallels, so gaming, especially AAA gaming, is a no-go. Stick to Windows 11 on Parallels to play your games. But you may have noticed that we do have an Ubuntu with Rosetta option, which is supposed to help run some x86-64 apps on Linux through Rosetta. Now, I couldn't think of a use case for me personally, since once gaming is out, I don't really use Linux for anything, but yeah, you do have that option. However, apart from gaming compatibility, the native apps, for example on Ubuntu, work great. It is really snappy and well-optimized, it doesn't feel like you're running it in a VM at all. So Parallels is pretty good. And again, I'm not just saying that because they sponsored this video, because they didn't sponsor all the previous times I said the same thing. There's still some software that will only run on Windows, and a lot of games that will also only run on Windows. Now, my primary use case for Parallels is running Windows Disk Image Burner or Rufus. Plus, anytime I want to play any of my childhood games, like NFS Most Wanted, I just quickly hop into Parallels and start playing. Especially on this M1 Max, you can do far more gaming than you think. As long as it is DirectX 11, there shouldn't be many issues. The real issue is that my laptop only has 512 gigs of storage, so I can't keep the games on there. Right. But yeah, if you're a Mac user and you need to use Windows frequently like I do, Parallels, in my opinion, is the best option. I think this is another obstacle that stops people from switching to Macs, but if you get a Mac and then get Parallels, you can get a lot more things done. Plus, honestly, they've made substantial improvements since the last time I tested it. So if you want to try Parallels, you can click my affiliate link to get started. And if you like the video, then go ahead and like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, then subscribe!